In this section, we'll talk more about specifically the traveling salesman problem and uh, the applications of Hamilton circuits and paths. So the traveling salesman, it's really kind of like a metaphor for any type of problem you would want to solve in real life um, involving Hamilton circuits and complete graphs. So it's not always just a traveling salesman. It could be anything. It could be going a school bus going from one place to another. It could be uh, you taking just a vacation flight to different cities all around the world. So um, pretty much any kind of situation where you would need to travel multiple places, you could apply to this. Okay, so uh, any graph whose edges have numbers attached to them is called a weighted graph, and the numbers are called the weights of the edges. And uh, the graph is called a complete weighted graph. So if it's a if it's a graph that is a completed graph and it has weights on every edge, then we'll call it a complete weighted graph. Uh, notice the diagram on the right. Uh, we have our salesman at home at ver uh, vertex A, and I, you know, he's got all the cities and edges, and all the edges have weights on them, and it's kind of like the monetary value, so how much it might cost to get from one city to another. What we want to figure out for these types of problems is a an optimal Hamilton circuit. So optimal meaning kind of like best value. Uh, we want it to be the cheapest total after our complete trip around the graph. All right, here's another good example. We have, um, on a much larger scale, we have a satellite leaving Earth, and uh, we want to hit all five of these moons to do some research. So we want to consider, all right, well, the satellite's going to be going a very long time. Uh, how can we minimize the amount of time as much as possible, and how can we save as much power as possible? And notice that this is a complete graph. Um, this is space, so we can go anywhere. We don't have there's nothing to detour around or anything like that. So we can go straight from one moon to the other. And again, it's just a matter of figuring out which total trip is going to be the least amount of time or the least amount of distance in the end. Okay, we have another space-themed example here. Um, we have seven sites on Mars that, uh, and we have a, a rover that's going to travel to all seven sites, and we want, in the end, to have traveled the least amount of distance across the land. So, uh, and on the left here we have a table. This is a little different from the last problem. We're going to use that table instead to set this one up. Um, I'm not going to solve the entire problem right now, but I will show you how you can get started or how to read the table at least. Uh, so, if, for example. If I want to show the distance from A to G, it's going to be 7,500, we'll say kilometers. Um, so from A, and this is Mars, so it's you know it's probably a really rocky terrain in many areas, and there's some craters, so we might have to do some zigzagging around, especially if we're just roving along on land. Uh, over here to G, okay, so that's 7,500 total. And... Um, you know, in the long run, that's probably not a path we're going to choose. It looks like it's really long. Um, it looks like we would much rather go from, instead of A all the way out to G, why not hit P and W and H on the way? Um, and we'll talk more about that coming up. Uh, let's do another one here. Uh, do a shorter one. So how about N to I? So that's uh, 2,000. So it's a pretty short path right there, 2,000. Okay, and if you really want to, you can draw out all of these and map them out, or you can try to solve it by looking at the table. So there's these are just two different ways. Uh, okay, so just some vocab for you here. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, the traveler in this case is the person going from site to site, and it, it doesn't have to be the person. It could be the bus, uh, the ship, the aircraft, whatever. Um, the sites where the person is going. The cost is each leg, uh, well, each leg of a trip usually has a cost. Uh, the tour, the path taken from beginning to end. And the optimal tour is a tour with the least total cost, so our best value. Another way you can look at those words are the sites. Uh, if we're talking about a graph, the sites are just the vertices of the graph. So going back to the, the terminology from the circuits and paths. Uh, the costs are the weights of the edges, okay? Um, the tour would be 
the Hamilton Circuit because we got to make it back home, and the optimal tour uh, would be the Hamilton Circuit of the least total weight. So we travel the edges that we want to travel, uh, which path or which uh, tour is going to cost the least in the end. A uh, few other examples here. So we've got a routing school bus. So think back to Euler, uh, Euler's method. In Euler, we had to hit every street, so that was very different. In Hamilton, we're just hitting every vertex. So maybe a routing school bus isn't quite as good of an example because with that, we really are trying to hit streets and not just places. So maybe if you're going on a field trip to multiple places, what's the best way uh, to hit those multiple uh, those multiple places. Uh, delivering packages, that's a pretty good example. So whether it's like a UPS truck um, or a FedEx or FedEx stuff going off on a plane, uh, what's the best way we can hit cities across the US or across the globe if we have to in the in the best order so that you know we have a the least amount total cost in the end. Uh, fabricating circuit boards even running errands around town. I'm sure uh, you or, or your parents or friends or family think about this every now and then. You know, I've got, I've got to take this to the dry cleaning. I've got to go to uh, to Target or Walmart to get this. I've got to go by the bank today. Um, every now and then, you know, you might want to map out, okay, what's going to cost the least amount to get around or really what's going to save gas for me um, and time. 